The Radeon Pro W6400 is the first 75 watt car from AMD in over five years. While it did take some cutbacks to get to this point, RDNA 2 is now available to people looking for low profile cards that only rely on the PCIe slot power. On the surface, this may look like a drop in replacement for the WX4100. In many applications, this new card is going to stand above its bigger brother, the WX5100. Taking a look at TimeSpy and compared to the WX4100, we are seeing 100% increase in performance, and that's after we've overclocked the WX4100 in the BIOS. Things get a little bit closer with the WX5100, but we're still seeing a healthy 10% gain in performance. And that continues on into Firestrike as well, being 10 to 20% faster than the WX5100. But how does this workstation version of the RX6400 do in gaming? Starting off with Overwatch and at 1080p low quality settings, we are above 200 FPS at times, really showcasing the 2.3 GHz clock speed on this card. There will be some dips into the mid 100 FPS when the whole screen fills up with effects or when you're actually doing the replays is when you're getting lower performance. But overall, this card pairs very well with a high refresh monitor of around 144 Hz playing Overwatch. Quickly looking at Dirt 3, and you can see that this card has no problem with this older racing game. At 1080p, ultra quality settings, 8x MSAA, all the bells and whistles turned on. We are above 130 FPS on average and never dipping below about 115 FPS. So yeah, a perfect experience. Older games are no problem with this card. Moving over into Minecraft Dungeons and at 1080p on the fancy quality setting, which is the highest quality po possible settings, we are above 100 FPS at all times, averaging somewhere around 130 FPS. And for this style of game, this is a really good thing since you are gonna want some overhead for when you get into the later games and there is a whole lot of action and items and enemies and explosions going on. So coming in at 130 FPS means that you won't really have to worry about this game ever becoming unplayable in the later stages. Moving over into control and at 1080p low quality settings and we're right around 60 FPS at all times with only the occasional dip below that. Now this is about the same level of performance as we saw with the WX5100, so there's not really much of a gain. And I'm guessing this is because of the lower bandwidth on this card. So when the effects pile up, this one kind of caps its performance there. But overall, 60 FPS at low quality settings is a really good experience. Temtem at ultra quality settings 1080p also plays above 60 FPS at all times outside of the performance stuttering induced by asset loading. For the best experience, you will want to enable the 60 FPS frame cap since going above that actually induces more stuttering so playing with a capped frame rate is the best way to go. I was going to test PUBG again, but unfortunately, due to all those testing I did in my last video, I was banned from that. So I am now testing Apex Legends again, and I realize that I have not played this in a while, and I forgot how to play it, and I have played really badly. However, you can see that at 1080p highest quality settings, we are right around 60 FPS, although you will have some dips when the effects kind of fill up the screen. So if you were going to go for a locked 60, you would want to either lower the resolution down a bit, but it's probably easier to just lower down a few settings and just maintain 60 FPS at all times. Quickly looking at rolled out and at 1080p cinematic quality settings, which is one above epic, we are above 60 FPS while in game. Uh, so that's maxed out, nothing else that you can really enable on this game. And we're above 60 FPS, so all the bells and whistles, you can play this game very well and it looks very nice. The internal physics engine does work at 120 FPS, so there is some benefit for going for higher frame rates. So lowering down into the high quality settings and you're about 120 FPS. Finish. 
Hellblade at 1080p, high quality settings, and FSR set to ultra quality plays pretty well on this card. You are going to be about 60 FPS when you're traversing the world, but when you're looking at a like a flashback scene or something like a fight scene, you are going to dip a little bit below that. And this is mainly due to those scenes being really effects heavy. So if you were looking for a lock 60 FPS, you would probably want to lower down the settings down to medium. But since you're always above 30 FPS, even at these settings, you could still play it here. Taking a look at Halo 2 running on the Master Chief Collection at the high frame rate mode, you can expect 115, 120 FPS in most situations, dipping down briefly into the upper 90s uh, when action kind of heats up. But at 1080p, highest quality settings with the enhanced graphics turned on, you'd have no problem playing it on the W6400 or in the RX6400. Lost Ark at 1080p, very high quality settings. We are seeing 60 FPS. Now this game does have a 60 FPS cap, so you aren't gonna get really above 60 FPS unless you mod the game or something like that. Um, and we can see that we are running somewhere around the 70 to 80% GPU capacity for 60 FPS, so that there is a little bit of headroom there for when the action heats up to maintain 60 FPS. But if you did want a more locked experience, I would probably recommend dropping everything down to just the standard high quality preset. That way you'd have a little more headroom for when the action heats up in the later parts of the game, since this part of the game here is a little bit on the easy side. The latest generation of Xboxes run on RDNA technology, and it shows when you look at Halo Infinite. At 1080p, low quality settings and adaptive resolution turned off, we are above 60 FPS in multiplayer. I would personally choose to enable adaptive resolution when you're playing this game, just so any performance hiccups that do happen would be smoothed over. But yeah, at 1080p, you have no problem playing Halo Infinite on 50 watts of power. It's pretty crazy. There are currently no available modding tools that let you unleash more performance on the 6400. But as this card ages and as more and more people get on hands of, you know, the W6400 and the RX6400, I would expect performance to increase over time if you are okay with modding your BIOS in order to increase the power limits and clock frequencies. At an MSRP of $230, the W6400 is probably not going to be worth it for most people. But if you are able to find the RX6400 at under $150, $100, this could be a good option for people looking for a small form factor build.